joining me for these trades is Danielle Shea. She is Simpler Trading VP of Options. Uh, it's great to have you here, Danielle. Very busy day. What, uh, what do you do with Intel? So when you look at Intel, Intel is a relative strength loser. And the fact of the matter is, is that even though they've been regularly beating earnings 11 out of 12 times out of the last 12 quarters, they've still continued to trade lower. And so when you look at this and you look at the fact that we have EPS estimates that are also in a downward trend, plus the weekly chart pattern that's in a bearish trend, you know, for me, even if they do happen to trade slightly higher on earnings, which I think is improbable, I think it's um, a bearish trade here. So when I'm looking at downside targets, I have about $25 for my downside target with overhead resistance at 30. So you could either, you know, short it on a move up into 30 or on the break of 28. All right. I, yeah, I can't say I'm terribly surprised, but I'm very curious what you'll make of the next one, which is T-Mobile. The shares are up 16 percent for the year as communication services is the best performing sector in 2023 so far. Last quarter, they had record subscriber growth. They were in the news last month after reaching that agreement to acquire Ryan Reynolds Mint Mobile, which that deal may be in jeopardy now. Who knows? Uh, so T-Mobile, Danielle, I mean, this one, actually, we just saw a notable, notable analyst downgrade at Moffitt Nathanson in the past couple of months. Do you like the stock here? I do like the stock. I think it's a great relative strength winner. I love the long-term weekly trend. They did really well throughout the pandemic, but they've continued to do well after the fact. And when you look at earnings, you know, they, they've continued to beat estimates and they've had really positive moves to the upside. There's been a few quarters where they've traded lower post earnings, but only about by about 1%. Um, when you're looking at the stock overall, we are up against some resistance at that 150 price point, but it has about a $6 expected move over earn on earnings. And so when you look at my overhead targets, I have about a 160, 165 price target on this stock. So, you know, I think if we can get a positive move from earnings, uh, which I think is highly likely, then we could break that overhead resistance and trade on upwards into that $165 price target. All right. So you like it. And the, the last one's a curveball. So this could get uh, get interesting as well. It's New York Community Bank. They're out before the bell tomorrow. We're watching for net interest income and deposits. Remember, New York Community Bank acquired a significant chunk of Signature Bank after its failure last month. Is this a stock? And you can broaden it out to the regional banks more broadly, Danielle, if you want. But what do you think of their behavior here. So when you're looking at this stock and any of the bank stocks, I mean, obviously, you know, you have that big bank crisis issue where, I mean, hey, if they come out and then they say that they've been having issues with deposits, this thing could tank just like FRC did the other day. So I think it's a, a big issue when you're looking at that. But overall, I mean, even ignoring the bank crisis, you can look at the longer term trend on this stock. It, over the course of the last year and a half, I mean, this thing has already been in a downtrend and you're up against resistance. So even if they don't have an issue as it relates to the bank crisis and deposits, um, I still think that it's a longer term short because hmm. of the overall trend. All right. And it's nine dollars a share today. Uh, we should point out as well. Danielle, before you go, Amazon is such a biggie after the bell. And maybe I can even throw snap in there, too. But I, I mean, give us the take with these stocks are up five, six percent into this print. Um, what do you think about there and especially Amazon's uh, prospects here? So, you know, when you look at Amazon and you particularly compare that to the way that the market has reacted to Microsoft and Meta so far, I mean, what we're seeing this earning season is that we knew that momentum was going to be slowing down. That was expected and earnings were expected to be it, earnings were expected to be feared, right? And so when we had these results come out and they weren't as bad as feared and we're seeing that, yes, you know, we know momentum's slowing. It's not a big story. We're seeing these stocks rally. And so I think that's the case with Amazon as well. You know, I actually really like Amazon stock here. Hmm. I think that after the split and after the fall, uh, that occurred over the course of the last year um, on a technical basis on the weekly chart it's really starting to shift higher and we're seeing buyers come in so i think that if we can get a report from amazon that's better than feared it doesn't have to be amazing it just needs to be better than feared and we could break up above the january high i think with that we could really see some upside momentum in amazon stock so with this one i am buying this stock here um, especially in the kids accounts because you know i think it's a great long-term play. That is fascinating. <laughs> Danielle, thank you so much today. We appreciate it.